For three years, and I wanted, I was offered to come here and um, make the tomatito spirit a little bit more attend here. So, um, first of all, when I came, I checked out the menu, and there were a few things that I wasn't very happy with with the previous menu that we had here. So. Um, my first job was to go through the menu, see dish by dish what works as tomatito style and what doesn't. So uh, my first task was to get familiar with the menu and to change it. Well, how was it different with Shanghai? Well, um, I think because it was the concept was born in Shanghai from. A different restaurant called El Willy. El Willy was like a mother restaurant. Then from El Willy came Tomatito. Um, Willy is a bit of a high-end restaurant, more fancy, more expensive as well. Uh, Tomatito came out of that as a cheaper, more casual experience. Um, so it feels like a real Spanish bar. Um, so um, the idea was. To achieve here something like like in, in China, in Tomatito in China. Um, I feel like here it was more of a restaurant more than a bar. So um, my goal is to make it feel the way the same way that it was in China. Like like a place that I would feel when I walk in like oh I'm in, I'm, I'm home, I'm in Spain. From the, the same company, so I don't I didn't need to get familiar with the concept. I already knew what tomatito was, uh, what a willy is, and what sexy food is. Um, so my uh, my addition is I'm Spanish. I I know Spanish food. I studied Spanish food, but I also lived in China long enough. How many years? Three years. Um, long enough to understand the difference between Asia and Europe. Uh, the difference in flavors, in vibes, sorry, um, difference in customers as well. So I got used to Chinese customers first. Now Filipino customers are very different. Um, but my addition, I would say my education in Spain, in the north of Spain, with tapas, pinchos, traditional Spanish cuisines, French cuisine as well, Basque cuisine, Plus the added, the extra that I, I learned in China and in the Tomatito Company. So all that cocktail. Are you uh, open to incorporating Filipino in, in here? Um, versions of Filipino dishes, yeah. For example, I think in November we will have um, a version of, is it called Sisik? What oh, is Sisik? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a pork, we pork. use a pork the head. Plate. So I'm gonna make Sisik Madrid style. Oh. Um, what do you call it in Madrid? Uh, we use oreja, mm. the pork ear, um, stewed oreja, so oreja guisada. Uh, I'm gonna make it here extra spicy with local chili, uh, touch of calamansi. So um, it's gonna be 
a Madrid dish. I'm from Madrid, Madrid dish, but Filipino style. Um, other than that, I'm I'm still learning about Filipino cuisine. I've been traveling a little bit. I've been here for almost two months. I've been traveling a little bit. I've been to Cebu, to Palawan. I've been in Luzon. Mm. Um, I did a couple outings, and friends took me out for for lunch, dinner. I I love trying new food and everything I've tried so far, from uh, like uh, big brain soup to uh, lumpia. I love everything. So definitely, I cannot do 100% Spanish here. If I did 100% Spanish. The restaurant would be empty. Um, just because we're very different and what works for me might not work for you. So that's why I'm really lucky to have a team, all of them Filipino, who understand that I'm not Filipino, that I'm Spanish, I know about Spanish food, but they tell me, hey, this is not gonna work, this you should change, you should add this. So it's a teamwork and I think all together it works and if you guys enjoyed it, it's yes. because of them making it possible.